I am part of a group that takes, a popular group that takes action to help Julian Assange. We're called Unity for J. I just found out that tomorrow the National Assembly has the Foreign Minister Valencia, Jose Valencia, to give them a report on Julian Assange to see if they take away his asylum for starters. Tomorrow that will be decided. Yeah. Seeing that you're the person that has visited the most Julian Assange at the embassy throughout all those years, and you have a first-hand experience on what his living conditions are, if you could please send your message of your experience to the National Assembly and Jose Valencia and the Cancilleria of Ecuador about whether these things are true. One, they claim that Ecuador has offered the best treatment, humanitarian treatment to Assange, that they have given him full access to the internet throughout, it's just that he has refused to use it, and that he has had absolute freedom of visitors and that he has had hundreds of them, so that all his statements are false and that he has absolutely no problem of privacy and that he has breached the protocol and this is why they're going to take away his asylum. Could you please tell us what is your experience about his privacy, about his internet, about his surveillance, about his visitors and about his humanitarian treatment? Yeah, well, uh, under President Correa, Ecuador did offer and give that safe place for Julian Assange, a small country, a small country which had quite a bit to lose, stood up to great power and gave Julian Assange. Asylum can't be uh, amended. Asylum is asylum. There's an international law that lays down exactly what asylum is. And in 2013, when Julian was given asylum, it was largely based on the fact of his abandonment, his abandonment by the Australian government. That is one of the great shames of this country. Uh -huh. uh, he had no refuge back in his homeland. That was a major consideration for the international jurists who were considering whether this request, as it was by Ecuador, to give Julian asylum would be accepted, and it was accepted, as I say, largely on that basis. What has happened in Ecuador is that Carrera was effectively hounded out of Ecuador. His number two, Marina, who has turned into more than a Judas, his own dark past has been revealed, and Julian Assange has become his whipping boy. The whole notion that the Ecuadorian government could impose a series of petty and not so petty restrictions on Julian is against international law. He had no right to do that. Also to threaten to get rid of Julian, to expel Julian, is against international law. Not only against international law, it's against Ecuadorian law. Because Julian, in the meantime, had got Ecuadorian nationality. He has now dual nationality. Australian and Ecuadorian. No Ecuadorian citizen can be extradited on a political basis. So all this has been illegal. What has happened since March 2018, the campaign against Julian, the restriction, the taking away of the internet, the restriction of his freedom, the leaking of lies about Julian, and the refusal to recognize that it is the responsibility of the country that has given refuge, given asylum, to negotiate in good faith that asylum with the country in which it has happened, and that is with Britain. Instead, Ecuador and Britain have become collaborators. 
It appears collaborators in a campaign to expel Julian. If, if they do expel Julian, it will be against every law and they know that that is the end of Ecuador's reputation, international reputation. It also worries diplomats and others all over the world because it breaks the very spirit of the Vienna Convention which protects foreigners like diplomats and others in foreign countries. And, but the psychological campaign on Julian has been daily and I've witnessed it and on his health has been daily. He's a man of the most extraordinary resilience, but his physical health is taking a battery. And it's certainly taking most of a battery since this campaign began. And I'll bring it back away from Ecuador just for a second. Last July, Julie Bishop, who was then the Foreign Minister and her Chief of Staff, flew to London and then they were going on to Washington. And they brought up, they went to the Foreign Office in London and they brought up, well, it was brought up, of course, Julian Assange. They had, they had with them a letter from Julian's father, a letter I've seen, a most moving letter, saying, John Shipman, his father, was saying, I fear that Julian won't leave that embassy alive. He was so worried about him. Now, this is an Australian citizen. They did nothing. They sat on their hands. Imagine if it was somebody else in some other country. They did nothing. They went on to Washington. She saw Pompeo, the Secretary of State. Nothing was said and flew back. And the hopes of a small group that had tried to influence them to just even mention Julia were dashed. Now, to my knowledge, we knew nothing about that. Now that is a cause of national shame. And then what we've seen since then is Bishop parading herself as some kind of feminist icon across the media instead of this uh, deferential, really disgraceful view. The Australian government could easily bring Julian home they could invoke all sorts of international statutes. And in fact, in the discussions around this, without saying so directly, Turnbull implied that that could happen when he was Prime Minister, but nothing happened. Nothing happened. And that is the shame. Thank you.